When you're building a website, you'll frequently want to grab data that is stored in your database and show it on your website. For example, if you're building a blog, then you might get the blog posts from a database. Or similarly, if you're building an e-commerce website, then you might get the products, the prices, and the inventory from a database. So in this video, we will learn how we can create a database, add some data to it, and then after that, display that data on our website. The first thing that we will need to do is we need to tell Django what the table that we're going to save our data to is going to look like. And that is where Python models become relevant. They are Python classes that define a table within our database. So let's go ahead and define the database table by creating a model. We're going to go to the models.py file and in there we're going to create the class member and every member that is going to be stored in this database is going to have a first name and a last name and both are going to be character fields. In addition to that, you can see that the first name and last name are both limited to a maximum length of 15 characters. And you also need to make sure that when you create one of these special classes that serves as a database table, it needs to inherit from model. And that is also why the models.py file has this import statement of models at the very top by default. And since we are already talking about defaults, the default database table that is configured with Django right after the installation is SQLite. And that is exactly why in the file structure, you can see this SQLite file down here. And besides that, if you go to the settings.py file and scroll down to the databases, you can see that by default, we have this SQLite engine. And if you want to use a different database technology, this is exactly where you'll be able to configure it. Now that we've defined a model to represent a database table, let's go ahead and actually create this database table. So within the terminal, let's first run python manage.py make migrations. And I'm going to add the name of my application, which is example app. And once we do that, we have created some migration files that appear under the folder migrations. If we go ahead and open that up, you'll see that in there, there is going to be a couple of fields, including the first name and the last name that we created, but there's also going to be an ID. So based on the model we created, Django has now created something that we call a migration file, which is going to be used to create the database. And by default, the ID column was added so that we can uniquely identify all the members in our table. So next, let's open up the terminal again and now run python manage.py migrate. So now we have successfully created a database and we are ready to add some data to it. So let's go ahead and write python manage.py shell. And now from the example app models, we're going to import member and we're going to create a new member by setting member equal to an instance of the class member we created. So I'm going to populate that with a first name and a last name. And I'm simply going to go with Max Jenkins over here. And after that, I'm going to save this member by writing member.save. To make sure that we've actually saved this member within our database, we can go ahead and quickly retrieve it by writing members, objects, all, and values, and that will return this query set where you can clearly see that we have an ID of one, a first name of Max, and the last name Jenkins. So up until this point, we have successfully created a model that was the basis to create a new database table. And within this database table, we have also saved one entry, which is Max Jenkins. The last thing that remains to be done is to show this data on our website. To do that, we need to adjust the views.py file. At the moment, I still have the code that I had in the last episode, but there's a few changes that we need to make here. First, I'm going to import the member model that I created earlier. Then within the index function, I'm going to add one line that gets all the members from the members table. At the moment, that's only one record. After that, I need to adjust the context that we're passing into the templates because I want to pass in the members that we got from the database. And now that I am successfully passing in the members into the template, I need to go ahead and change the template a little bit. So within the first template HTML file, which we also created last time, I'm going to go ahead and switch out this HTML for this HTML, and this is going to allow us to display the members. So all that's happening within this code snippet is that we have an unordered list, 
And then we have this tag with a for loop, which loops through all the members that we have passed in as context into the template. And for each individual member, we're creating one list item and displaying the first and last name using variables. Now, when we run Python manage pi run server and open up the link, you will see that we have a website and it shows us the data that we're fetching from our database. So you can see the first name Max and the last name Jenkins. We're gonna leave it here for this video. See you in the next one.